guys and welcome back to another LumaFusion video. In this video, we're going to go through the process on how to use the RobHK transitions and presets for LumaFusion. And we're going to make a sequence together, which will include zoom transition, spin transition and pan transition. And we're going to put that into a sequence and I'm going to show you exactly how to adjust them if they don't look perfect right away. And I'm also going to explain the framing system that I made. And I'm also going to explain the in and out system and how you can get the most out of these presets. And before I recorded this video, I made a preview so you can take a look at the same presets we're going to use today and how I put them together into this tiny sequence. Now, first I want to say I'm using the Mega Pack as a reference point to this uh, tutorial right here. And the reason why I do that is because it's the most sold pack and people seem to really, really love it. And the same way of cutting and applying presets goes for the other packs on Selfie as well. The whole system is the same. So if you don't have the Mega Pack and you have some other packs, you can easily follow this guide to get the most out of your transitions and to understand how the system works as well. So without further ado, let's jump over to the iPad and let's make this sequence together. So as we get over to Luma Fusion, you can here see the project that I was working on for the the teaser which you saw in the beginning of this video as well. And if we move over to the uh, final product itself, you can see that we have the zoom coming in here. We have the zoom coming out. And we have the spin transition followed by the brand new shake transitions as you, as you can see here. Followed by a shake uh, transition between clips or it's basically the same. Uh, it's one of the uh, more kind of harder shakes which can be used in between clips like this. So it transitions into a next one. And at the end here we have the so-called basic kind of pan transition and it pans up to down. And uh, if we move over to the uh, raw clips here which has no transitions, let me first explain how the transition system works. Now let's go to the first two clips here. We have this clip from space and we have this from the city. Now if we go just over to the files folder here and if we take a look at some of the presets, you can see that most of the presets, if not all, has a frame indication at the beginning which is 11 F in. This means 11 frames, so that means you're going to cut 11 frames and in. And you also see 10 frames out. Now let's move back to LumaFusion so I can explain exactly how the in and out system works. Now the frame indication is basically a guideline for how fast or slow you want the transitions to be. So if you cut a clip, which is eight frames like this, 0 0.08, and you apply a transition, which is 11 frames, that doesn't ruin the transition or the effect. It means that the effect is going to go faster. So if you apply an effect which is 11 or 15 frames long to this clip, that means that that effect is going faster. But I don't recommend that you exceed this with more than five frames because a bigger of a difference between the frame indication and the one you have on your timeline might ruin the transition and it might look jittery. So let me show you an example here. We have now cut this first clip here at the end, which is eight frames. Now let's cut the other part here. Now this is 10 frames. That means we can easily apply a 10 to 15 frames or 10 to 12, 13 frames preset to either one of these without having the effect being destroyed. The way that the in and out works is that we have the first clip here, right? And this is the first clip and we're going to transition between this and the second clip. Now we have the clip running as normal and we get to the point where we want to apply the transition. That means at this point we have the transition and the transition is going out of this clip and into the next one. That means this first clip here and the part at the end here 
has to include an out transition. So if we go back to the um, files folder, we have one here, for example, Jolt text. This is 11 frames out. Moving back to LumaFusion, that means we're gonna have the out transition on this because the transition is going out of this clip. And the opposite with the next one. So here we're gonna have an in transition because the effect and the transition is going out from the first clip into the next one. Now, if we take a look at the end here, we can do cuts as well. Now here, it's the exact same method. The transition is going out from this clip. That means here, we're gonna have an out transition. And here, we need to have an in transition because the effect is going out from this and in to the next one. Now that you understood that, let's go on and apply some transitions. We already applied some cuts here and we can try to use those. So here we have uh, an eight frame cut, 10 frame cut, 11 and 13. Now let's move over to this one and take 18 and uh, 17. But you can also go to the files folder first, take a look at all the effects and find the effect that you want to use. And here you can easily organize it better than within LumaFusion because the screen is also bigger and it's easier to see. If we go inside of LumaFusion and if we tap on one of the clips and then we tap on the envelope which has a star, you will get all the presets. Now if you go over to uh, frame and fit which is this indicated uh, crosshair kind of look here. And if we go down here, you can also see the same presets. So here we have a 10F out text warp. We go further down, we have 14 frames out, video transition, jolt two. And if we move further down here to, uh, let's see if we can apply a zoom transition. And here we want to apply a zoom out transition. So we have this zoom in is RobHK, which is out. That means this is going to the first one and this doesn't have a frame indication. And if it doesn't have a frame indication in front of it, like the presets right here, that means you can use it for either 10 or 20 frames cuts. Now let's go on and add a zoom out. And this is a zoom out is RobHK and out. And I've already selected the end clip here, which the transition is going out from. So I can now easily tap on this. And as you can see here, it starts from being zoomed in and then it zooms out. Now let's first go to the next clip here and apply the next preset, which is a link to uh, the first one. Now we're gonna tap on the envelope one more time, over to frame and fit, and uh, we're gonna go down until we find the uh, zoom transition. And this might look overwhelming because I have every single transition that I've ever made on this iPad. And for you, you might only have a few depending on which pack you got from Selfie. So this might look a little bit more overwhelming than uh, than what you can find on your iPad. Now let's find the zoom transition. Now on the first one, we applied the out, zoom out is RobHK. Now that means we're gonna apply the in zoom out is RobHK and that is located here. So we can now tap on this. And if we go back to the timeline here, you see the transition is coming, zooming out here. And then it continues to zoom out on the next one and it goes back to normal. But since this is a zoom out transition, and in LumaFusion we don't have the mirror effect or the replicate effect, which we have in Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and Premiere Pro. So that means we have to adjust the sequence here to match the effect. Now you can easily find the amount of zoom in, which is made to this effect by double tapping on the effect or the clip, go over to frame and fit, go to the first keyframe, and you'll see that this is 200. Now we can go back to our timeline we can go to this clip right here, double tap, go to frame and fit, and zoom this into 200%. Now if we go back to our timeline, we have zoomed this clip in, and this also works best for fast moving travel videos, and also with 4K resolution, because with 4K resolution, you can zoom more in without losing any quality. But now if we scrub through here, you see that we have this at 200%. Once we get to the transition, it's going smoothly out and smoothly into the next one. Now, since this is zoomed in, 
on the first part here, we might want to choose the same effect. And now this is 0 0.13 frames, so this is 13 frames, and we want to add something which can link this to this zoomed in. Or you can simply keep it like this if this is the look that you want, but that means we're going to have an effect which is zooming in to those 200. And we can easily just tap on the clip, go over to the envelope again, and we can find a zoom in transition. The zoom in transitions usually go from normal scale up to 200. So let's go down and find the zoom transitions once more. And once we located the zoom transitions, we will have to select in for this one, because this is still the same clip and it's coming in from the previous clip which the transition is going out from and even though we haven't made a transition connection between these two we'll have to choose the in transition for the beginning of a new clip now we're going to choose in zoom in is rob hk and once we selected that is going from the normal scale and it zooms into 200 percent so if we play this back we will have a smooth transition Now that we added the effect to this first part of this clip right here, we can move over to the next one. And on this one, we might want to add another zoom effect. That means we're going to have this at normal, and then we're going to have the zoom in. And once it zooms in, it continues to zoom in on this one, and then it gets to 200. We can also take the 11 frames here, and we can keep it at 11 frame, or we can adjust it if we want to do that by selecting the clip and increasing the length like this. And uh, the next thing we can do, is, since this is also going to be a zoom in transition, just like this, is that we can take this preset right here, we can select the clipboard here, copy everything, go to the previous clip, clipboard, and paste. Now you will have an effect coming in like this. And if it happens and you see that the effect and the preset and the zoom is stopping, just like it did here, you can always go to a point right here and you can make a cut and delete the last part of the clip. Now you made your transition even smoother. But since this is already zoomed in, we need to go back. We need to go to frame and fit and make sure that this is set to normal. We have to do the same thing with the previous one here and set that to a normal scale. So now we have no transition here at the beginning but we have connected all the last clips here with a transition. So if we do a playback through the entire sequence here, you will see that you have a perfect animation zoom applied to your clips. Now, if we take a look at this one more time, you can see it comes in like this and it starts pretty weird. And the reason for that is because I've already made an adjustment to this and that was to flip it aside so I'm going to flip it back. Now, if we go to the beginning here, you will see that the zoom transition is looking a lot better. Now, let's take a look at the final result. Perfect. We can also cut this a little bit more to make it a little bit smoother if we want to do that. Just like that. So now we applied a zooming transition to this, a zoom out transition to this, now let's add a spin transition to this. And what you can do is to first select the clip. You can go to the folder if you want to do that and browse the effects to see if there's any effects here and to find the amount of frames that you need to cut. But usually 10 to 15 is a normal cut you should be doing. Now let's take the 13 frames in lens spin left. Now the way that we're going to do this is since we found this now, we're going to apply the in first. And the way that we do this is to go back to the uh, second clip here. We're going to make a cut, which is 13 frames. And what I usually like to do is to apply the uh, uh, clip snapping here and remove it and take the cutted part here, just place it above like this, because then I get the exact same amount on the clip underneath. Then I'm going to take this and put back to its place and enable the clip, clip snapping. So now we have the uh, two clips here at 13 frames. Now let's select and make sure that the last one here is selected, the, uh, the in clip, which we have to apply uh, in transition to and select the folder. 
go over to frame and fit and find the effect we want to apply. Now this was 13 frames and we find it here, 13 frames in lens spin left. Select the next one, go into the same folder and now we're gonna find the out version. So lens spin left, 13 frames out. Here we have 13 frames out, lens spin left. So we're gonna tap on that and the preset is applied. So if we scrub through here, you will see that it zooms in and it spins and we have the perfect animation and the spin transition applied to the clip. Now let's do a playback of this transition as well. Perfect. Now to make this transition here and any transition look a lot better, we can go into edit on this clip right here. We can go over and make sure that color and effect is selected. Then go over to the water droplet right here. Then we're gonna find motion. We're gonna go to the middle, apply a keyframe, adjust the radius down to zero, go to the end and adjust the amount of a radius up to around five. You can also adjust the position of it and increase as you wish. So let's say we have the perfect transition blur here. We have it set to a radius of 30 and we're finished with the first clip. Now we can go out to the timeline, go into the second clip, go over to color and effects, go to the water droplet, find motion, apply motion, make a keyframe at the middle. And here we have to make a keyframe at the beginning as well. And on the beginning part, we can adjust the radius and the angle of the blur and on the middle keyframe we're gonna adjust everything back to zero now going back to our timeline you will have a smoother transition because we added some motion blur to it now let's move back to the zoom transition here this is the zooming out now let's go into edit on this and add the same type of blur now on this one, you can use the short zoom by going over to the water droplet, over to short zoom, make a keyframe in the middle and take the amount to zero. Go to the end, make another keyframe and take the zoom over to something like four or five. Now back to the timeline, go into the next clip, which is the in clip and apply the same effect. At the beginning, make a keyframe you can leave the amount at five if you want to do that. Now go to the middle, make another keyframe and adjust the amount down to zero. If we scrub through, we now applied motion blur to your transition and it looks a lot better. We can do the same thing with the next part here, or you can go back to the timeline. You can go over to this clip right here Make sure that this is selected, go to the clipboard, unselect everything except for the last one, which is color and effect, and then copy, go to the clip at the end here or the beginning of the transition, go to the clipboard again, make sure that everything is unselected and that the um, color and effect is selected and then paste. Now you will have the motion applied to this clip as well. Now let's do that with the second part as well. Copy the assets from the color and effects table, copy, go to the last transition part here, which is the in, over to the clipboard, unselect everything except for the color and effects, and then paste. And once we scroll through, you see that we added the motion blur to this transition as well. Now, if you like this transition right here, and this is something that you wanna use, you can simply copy everything from this, like this, copy, go to this clip right here and paste. Now you apply the same effect to that clip. But since this is a zoom in transition and this is already zoomed in, it doesn't look that great. So we're gonna reset this. So we have the normal clip and we're rather gonna move back to the zoom out transition, which is this. And we're gonna copy from the second clip here, which is the in transition, copy everything and go back to the in clip here and paste. Now moving over to the first part of this transition, copy everything, go back to the first clip of the next one which you want to apply it to, and paste. Now you have the transition going out like this. 
And since this is already zoomed out to 200 at the beginning of the transition here, we need to correct that on the main clip here as well. So we're gonna go into edit, over to frame and fit, and adjust the scale to 200. Now let's add the pan transition. So we're gonna make a cut which is around nine or 10-ish. We're gonna go to the first one here, go over to the same folder, then we're gonna go either to color and effects here or emotion. There is presets and effects here and transitions under the color and effects tab. You just have to scroll down and look for them. And here you can see that we have the uh, video transition pan one and uh, you also have some uh, bump zoom and you have some some different presets here as well but let's stick to the color and effects tab here and let's scroll down to find a pan transition and once you get to the section where the pan transitions is you can see that we have here some clips which are 30 frames rob hk pan down in version 2 and uh, even though this is 30 frames, you can use them for lower frame cuts because this only makes it go faster. And in some cases that is the look that you're after. So to give you a simple idea, if it's a high frame rate indication here, that means you can go a little bit lower, but if it's low, that means you don't want to go too high above because it's going to get jittery. Now we have selected the first clip here. That means we need an out transition. Now we have the Rob HK pan down out version one, and we have a couple of others here as well. Let's go with 30 frames Rob HK pan down out version one. So this is pan down out version one, and this is going to be the same as, uh, let's see here if we find the next one. And that is uh, this one. So this is pan down in version one, this is pan down out version one. Since we have the first clip selected here, which the transition is going out from, that means we're gonna apply the out. So pan down out version one. Now let's select the next one. This is going to be pan down out version one or in version one. So let's go over to the same tab here, color and effects. Now let's go down until we find the presets. That means we're gonna apply this one, which is 30 frames Rob HK pan down in version one. So we're gonna tap on that and we now have applied the transition. Now, if we scrub through here, we see the transition is coming in like that. It's already applied a lot to it. So if you don't like this LUT, you can simply go to color and effects and you can delete the LUT and you're good to go. So now if we take a look at this one more time, you can see it's panning down and into the next clip. And there's approximately around 50 different type of pan transition in total on Selfie, including in different packages, but most of them are included inside of the mega pack with the whip transition as well. Now let's take a look at the final sequence of the effects here. Once we apply the presets to the sequence here and you know how to apply them and how they work with the in and out and frame system, let's move over to the download part on how we can download these presets from Selfie and easily import over to Luma Fusion. So after you made your purchase of the paid or the free packs on Selfie, you will get a download link from Selfie and the download link will look something like this with a green download product button. And the way that you do to download these products is to tap on the green download product button and that will open up Safari. Once Safari is open up, you have a readme file here, especially for the LumaFusion Mega Pack. This readme file is no longer in this pack because this was an indication to the system which we had before, which was the Google Drive system. Now you can download everything here from this site. And you also have a download and use guide where you can also refer to this video, which we have uh, uh, just gone through every single step on how to download and uh, use the presets. And you have the uh, intro elements, kinetic, um, you have the audio presets, overlays, and you also have the transitions. Now let's go and download the transitions here. 
And the way that you do this is not to download through Dropbox. If you download via Dropbox or save them to Dropbox, you might cause issues for yourself getting them from the Dropbox over to LumaFusion. So the only way to do this and the best way to do this to make it 100% safe is to tap on the download, the green download button. And once you do that, you will get the note. Do you want to download transition and download? And here on the top right corner here, you can see the circle with arrow down indicating that you downloaded the transitions. Now, instead of tapping on the zip file here, we can go over to files folder, over to downloads and scroll through to the bottom here. And you will see that you get the transitions here. And this is now downloaded today at 12 o'clock, which is the time right now. And uh, the next thing you do is to tap on this one more time and it will unzip. And you can see here, it's downloading all the transitions. And I also have the folder here. So let's wait for this to be downloaded. And once this has downloaded all the presets, you can go into the folder and you can take a look at all the presets, which is following this pack. And there's a lot of presets and a lot of transitions following this, uh, this mega pack. And uh, the way that you import this is either to tap on select, select all, and then share, open in LumaFusion, and that will automatically import everything to LumaFusion. Or you can go to the zip folder here and you can simply tap hold on the zip folder. You can tap on share and open in LumaFusion. This will also import all the transition into LumaFusion. And I know that a lot of you might be doing the other way of going over to the import section here and then try to import the transition and presets. In some cases, this will work, but in most cases, you will have to do it via the files folder. And the same goes with LUTs. If you're gonna to try to go to the import button here under the color grading and LUT section here, import, and then let's go to files. You will see that all the LUTs here are basically grayed out. If we go over to the uh, my iPad here, here we have some masterclass LUTs and those are grayed out. So the way that we import this into LumaFusion is also to go over to the uh, section here where you have all the LUTs. Let's just download the LUTs as well. So we have them on our list here. LUTs, green download button. Everything will be uh, downloaded here, as you can see. Now let's move over to the files folder again, over to downloads, and let's scroll down until we find LUTs. Here we have LUTs. Now we can wait for the download to be completed. And once the download is completed, we can tap on the zip file and it will be extracting all the LUTs. And here you can also do it the same way. You can go into the folder here, select all of them like this, tap on share, and open in LumaFusion. Or you can go over to the uh, zip folder here, which is here, tap hold on the zip folder, tap on share, and open in LumaFusion. And the same way goes for the overlays and sound effects as well, but the sound effects and overlays will be located under the uh, uh, files section here or imported, most likely imported, and then under files, and then you will have all your sound effects and overlays listed. On some devices, LumaFusion will create an own folder which is called Mobile Safari. And this Mobile Safari will include the same effects, but it's just a way for LumaFusion to add a separate folder for your downloads or imports. So with that said, I really hope that you enjoyed the in-depth guide here on how to use the uh, preset pack that I made on Selfie Rob HK transitions for LumaFusion. And I really hope that you enjoyed it. And when it comes to the, um, the shake, camera shake transition and preset and the camera handheld camera movement preset, those are coming soon as well, which you saw in the beginning of this video you can see another preview here if you want to and uh, I will come back to that shortly and we have sale now as well I'm extending this during this pandemic through entire April and I'm gonna make sure that I finish these presets so I can add them in so you can get them on well you can get them at a lower price as well 
yes whoa there this was a really really long video but anyway i hope you enjoyed it and as always if you're new to this channel and want to support me and want to see more videos like this make sure to boom that subscribe button that would be really appreciate it so until next time make sure to check out the selfie page check out the masterclass as well if you want to learn more about luma fusion video editing and stay safe and wash your hands and uh, i'll see you guys in the next video peace